Hi, welcome to another edition of Painting with LT. I'm here in Tennessee, my beautiful wife. We got away for a few days, so this is our Tennessee studio. So with that being said, I hope to paint a painting with you today I call Midnight Swamp. I promised this a few months ago for YouTube, and due to technical difficulties, it just didn't work out. So we're just going to try one final try with it to, to see if it will work. So let's zoom back to my palette. Uh, and what I have, I have a 16 by 20 canvas, as you can see here. I'll go ahead and adjust my light there to it so you're able to see it. And here my palette I have, and I'll go through the brushes as well, but I have a Prussian blue, phthalo blue, titanium white, uh, cadmium yellow, burn umber, dark sienna, sap green, black, and phthalo green are the colors I'm going to use for this painting today. Now I have went ahead and already covered the canvas with liquid white. You can use a gambling gel, that's what I normally use, but up here when I left to Tennessee, I didn't have any of the gel. So I had a can of titanium white or uh, liquid white, so I just use that. So with that being said, I'm going to take my two inch brush. Well, let me go through the brushes first. We're going to start off, we have a two inch brush. We have a one inch brush we're going to use. We have an angle brush. And again, I highly recommend all you guys get one of these. You can get them at Michael's. They're great for the palm trees that we're going to do. We have a fan brush, a number six fan. And I have a couple of filbert brushes, a liner brush, a Kevin Hill liner brush. I like it much better because it's longer. Uh, fantastic. A pellet knife and some linseed oil. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with, again, I've covered it with liquid white. I'm going to start with some of the cadmium yellow. And I'm going to put up here and put in where my moon is going to go. And yes, I just had a dog jump on my lap. And obviously there's black on my brush. But we'll make it work. I'm not going to sweat the small stuff today. That will work. I'm going to take a little bit, put it down in my water for my reflection. I don't know where that black came from, but that's okay. Put it down here. I'm going to give my brush a quick wipe off and I'm just going to work this in. Circle strokes, whatever it may be, just get that worked in. This is just the background for the moon anyway, it doesn't really matter. Now I'm just going to wipe my brush off. Try to get most of the yellow out of it, but you're not going to get all of it and that is fine. Swirl it into a paper towel, wipe it off, whatever you got to do. And now I'm going to go into some of the uh, phthalo blue, which is the brighter of the two blues. Now all I do is pull through both sides, just like this. And I'm going to go around my yellow, just like this, and form what looks like an egg. Bright egg, I call it. And there we go. And just kind of make a circle out of it the best that you can. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to go right back and do some more of the, uh, more of the blue. Pulling it, all I'm doing is pulling it straight through, just like this. Go right back up, do the same X stroke, working out to the sides. Staying out of the middle now, we'll go back to that in just a minute. You don't want to go too high here because if you do, your moon's going to be too low. So you want to leave it high like that. And I'm going to work that right down towards the horizon here. Now, I'm going to go right back into that blue, the halo uh, blue. And I'm going to add it to the water down here. Remember when you do water strokes, they are horizontal. So I'm going to pull, I hold the brush horizontal just like this. I pull it from the sides. And go all the way across, just like that. Do the same on the other side of the water. Again, when you pick your horizon, you want to be just be just below half here. So I'll just make sure I'm just below here. There we go. 
You never want to be right at half. You always want to be just below or just above. Today we'll be just below. So I feel that in there. There we go. And I'll continue with the horizontal strokes. Be several other colors added to the water. So again, this is just the underpainting at this point. And I'll work a little bit more of the Phalo Blue in. Or again from the sides. What you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that your moon uh, shadow here goes directly below your moon. You don't want to leave it lower or stuck on the side somewhere. So, all right. Now I'm just going to go right into the Prussian blue, which is the darker blue this time. I'm loading it the exact same way, pulling it straight down. And I'm going to start over here in the corner. I always start in the corner uh, with the Prussian blue. It's good and dark, and I'm using the X stroke. You see it's just an XXX, just like this. Load up some more paint. I'll put it up here in this corner as well. You want it much darker, XXX. Working that in. I'm trying to do it quick, but I'm trying to get it where you guys can understand it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post on here and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. It's kind of an easy painting once you learn how. And I hope to have many other videos, the how-to videos to help you learn, because that's what we're here to do, is all learn together, and uh, hopefully we can all learn this painting stuff. It's a lot of fun, very relaxing at times. And hopefully we'll get it right here. So I'm still doing the X-stroke. Still doing the X-stroke, pulling in this darker, darker color. I'm not doing any blending yet. All I'm doing is working it across. To the pray into the phalo blue and just work it across. There we go. I'm gonna go right down into the water now. Add the dark in the water. Again, the brush is now horizontal. I'm working it in, again, loading it, pulling straight down this time. Horizontal strokes, just like this. Pulling it down. Now turn the brush up and just go straight across. And I'm filling the whole bottom down here. Start, when you need a little more paint, you don't want to start in the middle, start on the sides. Best way to do it there. And we'll get that all across. Now up here, I'm just very gently going over it, knocking back my reflection just a little bit. And there we have it. That's very brief water, a basic. We'll come back to it in just a few minutes here. So, all right, let's go back to our moon now. And we're gonna take a little bit more of the phalo blue that you have here, phalo blue. I'm pulling through both sides, just like we did there. And now I'm gonna start in a circular motion, like this, going around the moon. More of a U, because I don't wanna go over the top. So I'm just doing like this, I'm working my way in. What that's going to do is going to start shaping my moon. Please take your time with this part. There is no hurry. I painted this a handful of times here, so I'm a little quicker at it. Take your time. Take your time. This is not the finished product. We're going to put white in it to brighten it up. If you want to try to get it somewhat round, you can always wipe your brush off. Go right back in. Start working it around again. Hopefully you're able to see it. Taking my time. You want it to be about the size of a half dollar or something like that. Really, you be the choice. It's your painting. You can make it bigger, smaller, doesn't matter. You be the judge of it. You be the judge. There we go. That's pretty close. I'm not too worried about the top. I got a big branch that goes across the top that hopefully I'll get to show you in the uh, Reference photo. I'm just not sure how to put that in the video. Maybe I can follow a friend and find out. Okay, there's our basic moon shape. I'm gonna kind of pull the paint out now. Let's do a little blending in here. Blend, blend, blend. Let's blend all this together. A little bit of a halo around it, but not too much. I'm just doing a quick X stroke blend, just like this. Circle stroke. Uh, Kevin Hill always uses a circle stroke. I love that. Uh, it's a great way to put paint on. Great way to blend. If you don't watch Kevin's videos, please do. He is fantastic. Great friend, great guy, and uh, fabulous painter. Just amazing. All right, anyway. Okay, so there we have a basic moon now. Let's come on down. I'm 
Let me move the sky here a little bit. Now, now that I've got the sky done, I want to finish this off here with a little bit of the phthalo green. It does not take much of that, but I want to add that blue-green color to the water. Hopefully you're able to see that. Just add that blue-green color to it. It's very powerful color. So once you do this, you do not want to get it in your sky. Be extra careful. There we go. Just a little bit. I don't want too much of a reflection today. I'm going to kind of leave it like that. That's good. Okay. And there we are. There's we're done. Now, one of the keys to this painting is, uh, is going to be the clouds we put in next. But before we put in the clouds, we need to wipe off our canvas. What I do is I just take some paper towels. I very gently, I wipe it off. Do not get in your moon. Do not get in your moon. Say that again. And the reason I'm wiping this off is because you don't want too much paint on here. Uh, you'll hear Kevin Hill say a lot, paint is not your friend in the sky, and that is so very true. Because when you go to put clouds in it, it immediately turns white, and that's not what you're wanting to do here. So, here we go. Just take some of the color out of that. You can see it's taken off quite a bit. And then I'll go back to my one inch brush and I'll just re-blend it again for no paint this time, just a dry brush, just to alleviate all of the brush strokes. Now I have a clean brush here, and that's what I'll use for that. So all I'm gonna do is just do the X strokes, just like this. And all the way across, work it back up towards the moon there, again, without going in it. Right around it's fine. Just blend, blend, just like this. Get rid of all the brush strokes. Now, before we do this cloud, let's go ahead and add the moon. Now we get to do a little bit of finger painting here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna paint it's a second painting tonight, but hopefully my finger's clean here. I'm gonna touch briefly into the white, just like this. Get a little bit of my finger, I'm gonna start right here. I'm just do a circle. Try to keep it as round as possible. Work up here into it. All right, wipe my finger off. Try it again. Right back into it. It's getting there, slowly. Again, if you end up with a moon that's not a perfect circle, don't you sweat it because you can always cover it with a branch. The joys of being able to add trees to it, or branches, or moss, is uh, you can cover it up. So that's pretty good at this point. I think that will work for the video. So I just want to give it one quick touch up here, make sure I have no more big clumps of paint on here. And we will go ahead and add the clouds. Now for the clouds, I like to use a number six, a number six fan brush, okay? And I'm going to start with the Prussian blue because in the reference photo you see how a dark cloud comes down and across. So let's do that one first. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the phthalo green because I do not want to get back into that at all ever for this painting. So I'm going to wipe it off, throw it away. Guys, do that. Don't get into the phthalo green. Get rid of it. Rid of the phthalo green. All right, that's gone. Now, I'm going to pull through my white, just, I'm sorry, I didn't want white. Let me set that brush down, I got another one here. Uh, let me pull through my Prussian blue, which I have here. I pull through both sides, just like this. Hope you're able to see that in the video. Both sides. I have a decent amount of paint here, not too much, decent amount. And what I do is, when I hold the brush with the label up, just like this, just like I showed you in the how-to video before, and I smush it, and I come in and I smush and I twist. Let me flip it here, smush and twist. And there's my first cloud. All I do is come in here, brush the bottom out. Level it out. Using the whole brush almost, almost. There's our cloud. There's our dark cloud anyway. Right that nice and easy. Okay, now I'm done with that one. Now I go back into my white. So again, to show you how I do it, let me get a bunch on the right corner here to make sure I make it good and bright for you. What I do, I've loaded it just like this. There's a lot of paint. I put the label up right here, okay? And I start here, I smush, and I'm just doing little circles, little circles, going up and down, around, over, under, and just like this. 
come up over on this side a little bit. Now I flip my brush over where I have more paint. And I kind of pull out from the bottom, leaving some of the dark show. And I'm just very quickly throwing in some clouds today. This is not the highlight. We'll highlight these in just a second. You can always throw some up here in the dark just a little bit, a little accent up in there. Wipe off your brush because you are going to pick up the blue. Just kind of spinning it into that. I'll go back and do some more white. Same thing. I want another row right below it. So I'll start here. One corner is smushed. That's what I'm using to use. I twist my brush to get to more paint. And there we go. Now I'm blending. I can blend back this way, this way, using just the same corner. All I'm doing is blending. Leave the dark areas. A little trick you can do is, let me show you, because it's really kind of cool how it works. You see there's a lot of white in there. What you can do is you can go back into the Prussian blue a little bit. Wipe some of the paint out, and I'll show you here. As I load it, i got a decent amount, but I'm just tapping it off. I come right back into some of the white. Throw some in. I've got a little clump of paint there, isn't it? Uh, I thought we're just throwing a little dark, and I feather that back out, just blending it. Look at that, look at that. Comes right back in and takes it to a whole nother level of just adding uh, more dark to it. So, well, it's pretty cool. And again, I don't spend a lot of time on clouds. I've got a video on clouds, how to do it. If you want to know more, feel free to ask me. I'm always glad to help people. Uh, I've had a lot of help throughout my time, and if I can help you, man, please let me know. Be glad to. I love to paint, love to help. I'm, uh, I teach here in Florida, hopefully, teach in Tennessee one day well so but right now we're kind of back and forth but teaching mostly in Florida that's why we started YouTube painting with LT and I hope you guys will find these videos helpful and share like subscribe and all that good stuff so all right there we have our sky uh, looks pretty good I think we're, we're okay with that let's highlight a little bit for that I'm gonna take a number three fan which is just a little one and right below the moon I'm not gonna do the dark clouds I'm just going to do the lighter ones. Uh, but anyway, I've got a decent amount of paint. I'm just going to kind of smush some in here. A little bit over there. All I'm going to do is throw in some paint. It's just that easy. Throw a little bit in. Smush. Blend it back. Leaving the bright spots in it. Do a little bit more. I picked up a little more of the blue than I like. Just add a little bit more. A little bit more highlight. There we go. Don't want to go muddy on you. Gotta be careful here. Don't want to go muddy on you. Gotta be careful. Alright, there we go. That's pretty good. Alright. Now, let's come on to our background or distance trees. As you saw in the photo, reference photo there, we're, we're working on the background trees now, which are right here at the horizon. For that, I'm going to use some black, some uh, sap green, a little bit of white to brighten, lighten up just a little. And all I'm going to do is tap. All I'm doing is tapping. These are just distant trees uh, that are off in the nighttime there. They glow just a little bit, not much. Back into the paint here. Again, vary the heights. You don't want them all the same. Vary the heights. Over here doesn't really matter. Over here doesn't really matter, so I'm not going to worry with that. So as you do it, don't worry about that part. That's all kind of covered by the bigger trees there. And I'm just kind of tapping this in, varying the heights a little bit. Some bigger, some smaller. And be careful when you put your moon in. You don't want it in the middle. You always got to be careful not to put stuff exact in the middle of the painting. So just be mindful of that. Try not to do it. Try not to put it in the middle. That looks good. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take that, uh, let me see, I'll just take that fan brush, I guess. That one I had the blue on is fine. And I'm just going to pull this down just a little bit. Straight down, straight down, straight down. Not much of a reflection because it's in the distance. Straight down, straight down. Good. I'm going to pull it across just like this. Push a little bit harder. Here we go. Now I take my knife. I think most of you have done a waterline, but you pull your paint out flat like that, wipe it off, 
come in, we just cut in the water line like this. Horizontally straight. I always tell my students, horizontally straight. And there we go, that's done. All right, the next step is we have to put the island in uh, that you saw in the reference photo, at least I hope you will see. And that has done the exact same thing with a filbert brush, the black and the green. And I'm going to start it right about here, and it has to go up to about there. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap and fill this area in. All I'm doing is tapping, tapping. I'm going to dark it up just a little bit here in a minute. Bring it over. Add a little bit more black to that because I don't want it quite as see-through. There we go. Add some black to it. Now on this one, we got some palm trees coming out of it. So I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a second. All right, good. There's our island right there. Nothing too fancy, just a very basic island. I'm going to make it darker on the bottom, because again, of course it's going to be, because a lot of that's blocked out by the moon there. So I'm just tapping, tapping in here. All this will be pulled down into reflection here in just a few minutes. That's good, that's good. Couple darks up here, great. All right, now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of linseed oil, that's what I have here, I'm gonna put that on my palette. Put a drop or two, and I can't lift you up and show you this because it'll run right off my palette. I'm gonna take my Kevin Hill liner brush, and I'm gonna spin it in that linseed oil, and I'm gonna go through some black. And I'm just twisting. You know, when you twist it, as you can see, it comes to a fine point. Uh, if you're able to see that. I twisted it and it comes to a fine point here. So I'm just going to kind of pull up here. There's a palm tree. And make it a little thicker. There's a palm tree right there. So I'm going to get some more black. Twisting into linseed oil. Twist, twisting. And I'm going to go ahead and put a palm up here. Again, these take practice. Don't be afraid to practice on your palette somewhere or on the paper. You're fine. There's, you know. These take practice, so they're just very basic. They're off in the distance, so I'm not gonna sweat too much of these in this painting here. There we go, it looks like palms. You could always come back in and just put a little bit of fronds in, in the fronds, meaning just kind of touch right in here, bring a couple of fronds down, there we go. Make them look more like palm trees. Go. And I'll twist this. Guys, do practice these. They truly take a lot of time. Again, I'm rushing through it. I've done a lot better, but for this video, it's okay. We're just throwing some in. Add some more dark to that. I'll dark that up a little bit. Again, if you have trouble with your paint getting off, just use the linseed oil, and it will help. Uh, put it right back in there. There we go. Just like that. Same here. Okay, good. Now, we've got to follow and make our reflection come down. There's one. There's another one there. So let's just put our palm in down here. These are the leisure. I just got to do some X's like this. Put a top on it. And they are going to blur out anyway, so it won't be much of a problem. There we go. All right, so there we have our palms. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fan brush, and I'm going to go ahead and pull down my island again. Now this is where we had it before, so I'm just going to very gently pull it down. Pull it over the palm trees. There we go. There that is. Pull it down over the palms. That blurred them back a little. Pull from the side, straight across, even down over the palms. Straight across, straight across, there we go. Now I hold it back up here, cut my water line, same thing. I come in here, slide it in horizontally straight. Got some water out here, it's perfect, throw it in. That's great, slide that water in there, perfect, all right. Now, for the next step, we're going to take our green and black. We're going to go into the, uh, um, the big trees on the right side of the painting. And all you're going to do is you're going to come right here. You're going to make like a, I like to call it an L shape. 
I just need to make like an L right here. I'm a little bit lower than my other island there. So I tell my students to start with that. I've got to add a little bit more black. Give me just a minute to locate that. Here it is. And the way you load this brush is you pull through the black like this and the green like this. And you kind of get it where it's rounded. Can you see where it's almost rounded there? And then you want to just tap. What you're doing is tapping. You've got this L shape now. And now you start bringing it out and thinking about a tree shape. See, this is all here where I said it didn't matter before. This is a tree shape that we're talking about. All you're doing is smushing, smushing, smushing. It's going to be a little lighter at the top of it, and that's fine. Darker down the sides and edges. Darker in here. All I'm doing is tapping. Bring some of the paint over. Be careful not to make it look so defined that you have you know a line here, a line here, a line here like that. Fill it in some. You're better off. Fill it in some. Hope you're getting this okay with the glare. Hopefully it's all right. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put in some of the reflection out here, make it darker down here as well. Go ahead and pull some of this down. While I'm here, we can have a big palm tree reflection there anyway, but let's just go ahead and pull this down some now. There we go. Let me add a little more dark to that. I want a little darker. There you go, just a few spots here. Good, good, there we go. Close them up. Okay, good, I think we're okay. I think I turned the camera on you. Uh, let's bring it back. Now we've got this. Let's drag it across. Okay, no waterline yet, we're not done with it. But I'm gonna go back to my Kevin Hill liner brush here. I'm gonna take a little bit of the linseed oil now, which I have here. Again, I can't show you this, but I can show you uh, the result. I twist it, I go through some black, a little bit of white, uh, kind of make like a gray, if you would. That's a little bit of gray color. And I'm just gonna pull up here, and you, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, again, all I'm doing is just putting in some tree trunks. You can see it in the original painting. Just some tree trunks, throwing something like this. That's all you need. And just hang them down if you want, drag some of the water so there's a little bit of reflection there, not much. And now I'm going to take, uh, we're going to highlight. And so what I'm going to do to highlight is I have what's called a chip brush, which uh, is a very cheap brush. You can get them in a, a, a hardware store, you can get them different places. They're just very cheap and very uh, good for this type thing. But we need to highlight uh, these trees on the right, on the left here. So let me find the chip brush. I just saw it in my mess here. Let's dig one out. And of course, there it is, there it is. Here's a chip brush, uh, just a cheapie. Now what I do is I take my linseed oil and I'm gonna show you how I do it, then I have to set it back down. And all I do, here's my green. Uh, I'll have to show you the bright green. I'll tell you in a minute what it is. But I dump it right on top because I want it very thin. And it is. this is a uh, color that's called uh, permanent green light is a color. I got it at Michael's. It's uh, actually a cheaper paint, but it works okay for this. So uh, I just tap into, the, tap into the color just like this. You want it very thin with the linseed oil. And less is more uh, as you highlight this. So all you're going to do is remember this is a nighttime painting. So all you're going to do is come right here at the very top. Just tap a little bit right in here. Tap, 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 tap. Not too unified. Just tap it down. A little bit here on the edge. Good. A little bit in the water. And you can actually pull that down. Good, good. Brush it across. There you go. Okay, there's our highlights for the tree. Do not overdo this, folks. You do not want to overdo that, okay? So now, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go back to our uh, angle brush that we had before. Oh, I don't think we did use it before. Uh, this is angle brush, I mentioned to you from Michaels. It's just phenomenal uh, brush. Now I'm gonna go into some uh, brown number, a little bit of black here, and I'm gonna do my palm tree uh, and I load it just like this, very thin, meaning just keep pulling it through. You want it to be very thin, like that, okay? You don't want a lot of paint. So you come from here, figure out where you want your palm tree. I'd rather it be thin to start, come up. There it is, 
All right, so now I'm gonna work on the trunk because as you see, it's pretty skinny at the bottom. So I'll just start back up here, come down, turn my brush a little bit, make it a little bigger. There we go. And I can reflect that off right off in the water. Here it is. Oops, that's a big reflection. There we go. That's right. We'll work on that. Matter of fact, I don't like it. I'm going to brush it back right now and you'll see we can change it. There we go. We can change it. So I'll just come right back in here. And there it is. And there's our reflection. That looks better. So now I'm going to go right back into some black and some green. Just like I have there, keep pulling it through, black and green. And I come up here and I'm gonna add this portion to the palm tree. This is where the fronds join the tree. So I've got that there. Again, I reload with some black and the green. And I'm gonna draw my fronds out. Okay, there's one, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. How about ten? That's good. Be careful not to make these too big. Uh, before you know it, you have a sequoia palm. You don't really want that. Unless you want that, then you can do it. Again, I'm still loading it just like this, black and green. Now, this is a good time to practice uh, on your paper, on your canvas, I mean, on your side of your canvas, whatever. But what you do is, once you have your fronds like this, you just pull using just the tip of this brush, like that, to make your frond. Okay, this is a cabbage palm that I'm doing. You can always do the banana palm. You, you can use your fan brush for that. We use that a lot in a Bob Ross style. Kevin Hill uses that. Well, there's lots of different, so many different kind of palm trees. It's amazing. Once you start looking, there are so many. Okay, and here's this. Working on another front on here. Remember, this is a nighttime scene, so these are going to be pretty dark. If they're not dark enough, throw some more black in it. I'd rather be too dark than too light. Up here at the top, I'm really just going to throw in a couple here. But at the top of the tree, I usually just, like this, pull some in. There we go. I'm going to grab some black here. I'm still loading exactly the same. Work your paint, guys. Don't let it build up on your brush. Work the paint, pushing pretty hard, keeping it good and thin. Pull down, here's another one. Okay, I've got one more to do there. I think I need some more black paint. The heck out of that stuff tonight. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now, what you can always do is you can always be, don't ever be afraid to put your fronds across your tree like that, because you can always come back and um, bring your tree in front of it. I'll wipe off my brush there, come back into a little of the brown. And just, let's just bring that trunk right back out. There we go. And I'll cut right in front of it. There we go, and let's send it to the back. There we go. And there that is. Left side of that tree there, I'm just gonna come down, drag it down the edge here, pull a little bit across there. There we go. Okay, so we have that. So now, let's work on the last part of the painting, which is the big tree. You can see that in the reference photo. I'm going to take a lot of black and green. And this is where you got to kind of figure out where you want your tree. It's going to be right in here. So I'm not really going for the uh, bark or anything right now. This is mainly black. All I'm doing is tapping. Tap, 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 tap. These are the bushes down here. You can go as far over as you want to go. I'm going to stop. Again, you just don't want to stop halfway. You always want to go above half or below half. Either, you know, don't, don't just stop at halfway. You want to make sure your island's hidden here. So you go up where this is in front of that. So I'm just jab tapping that. 
same way you load it lots of paint tap it make the big l all the way up go across here be careful your moon we'll come back to that in two seconds here tap it down tap it down there you go now i'm thinking about some trees coming over tree branches coming over so i'm just going to tap a little bit here right into the black here i'm just tapping Tap, tap, tap. Hope you get a good picture of this. Bring it across over here. There we go. And that's kind of what you want, just like that. Good. I'm not ready with the trunk just yet. We'll put that in in just a minute. I just want to get the basic tree. Uh, again, the basic underpainting behind the tree there. So I'm just going to throw this in here. Hair on there, brush hair, scoop it up, hopefully. There it goes. Good, good. Okay, now what I could do now is I could take my angle brush and I could go back into the black here. And let's just put our limbs in. Okay, it's pretty easy to do with this brush. I've got it relatively thin just with the black. So I'm gonna come over here, I just touch it, I'm gonna drag it across. Come on down. Okay, we know our tree's gonna come like this. This is the shape, so I'm just gonna drag that up. Looks a little muddy right now, and that's okay because we're gonna put a lot of texture on it. So the mud's not really a problem right now, so you still get a little mud, don't worry with it. You can wipe off your brush because it is picking up the blue, it's picking up a little bit of everything. I'm gonna go back into some more of the black. I didn't show my canvas, but I'm loading it the same way there. This branch comes off here. There's another one here. Wherever you want these to go, folks. It's up to you. It's up to you. You can have them longer than that. You can have them shorter. You gotta have somewhere to hang your moss. That's a big thing. So, there's another one comes out. There you go. Wherever you want them. Wherever you want them. Okay? That looks pretty good. There's a bunch of branches on there. Now, what you can do is if you got too many branches, if you want to set them back, you can go into a little bit more of your paint. Like you have here and all you do is just kind of tap okay that sets a couple of them back so they're all just not so sticking out there there we go there we go okay there we got it like that now we need to highlight so let's go back to our chip brush let's go back to our linseed oil because before we can really do this tree the tree for the most part is dark again being a nighttime swamp but i'm putting it directly onto that green again and i take the chip brush I wipe it out because I know it's got some of the dark on it. I tap into the linseed oil and the green. And I stay mainly on, whoops, I picked up the whole pile. Mainly on the bottom of this tree here where the moon will hit it, where the color, you know, where the light would hit it. There we go. What I'm do here, guys, lots, lots of little. A little is a lot. How, what is it called? Little and lots of little, something like that. Anyway, just don't overdo. Don't overdo this. Throw some down here like it throw it in just don't overdo don't overdo i'm kind of overdoing here just for effect here that's good i'll leave it okay that's good that's good we gotta put a big trunk in there anyway so we're okay throw another one over here what the heck put one in all right here that's good leave it all right so i wipe that brush out set it down we're done with that one right now put the top on the lindsay door before i spill it and what we're going to do now is we're going to take our two browns on the palette knife. Now I have a big palette knife here and I have brown umber and I have dark sienna. I'm going to mix those two together. I'm going to grab a little bit of the white. You don't want too much of this. You want it good and dark. And I am going to clean my knife off so you guys can see how much paint I have. I pull it across. I have that much paint. Can you see how much paint that is? That is a ton of paint. So I'm gonna start here. I touch near the bottom. I drag it up. It's gonna kind of take what it wants or not. Do it again, didn't take very much. There's more paint. The reason it didn't take much because I'm using such a small amount of pressure. If you use too much pressure, you can lose it all within the first couple inches here. Light, light, light pressure. Take your time. All the way up. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. There you go. Just fill this in here. Take your palette knife. Grab some more of the brown. 
All I'm doing now is using paint. Now folks, when you do this, this is gonna take a couple weeks to dry. I'll tell you straight up this part, just because you got so much paint on here. Look at that tree bark. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you can come right back in. I'm gonna show you a little bit of black. We'll spend a little bit of time on this and highlight a little bit. If you get some out of the tree, don't sweat it. We'll fix it. Um, you have to bring a little of these out in the branches. You don't want to make it look like all the branches are just the black like we drug out before. Okay, you got to have some of them connecting to the brown tree. So let's do that. Even some of the ones up here coming across. Here we go. There we go. There's some of the dark ones. Slide that knife down. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that tree. That's what you want. No pressure, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure, hardly any pressure at all. All right, looking pretty good. Again, guys, I am rushing through this, but take your time with it. Uh, again, I've done this a handful of times now, so I'm sure it looks pretty easy. And it is, uh, once you practice it, but it's nothing that you cannot do, I promise you. Okay, let me show you how to do this moss. I was uh, pleasantly surprised to see how easy it was to do moss. I always thought it was difficult, but uh, found out it really wasn't. So what you do is, you take your palette, and I'm gonna dip through some linseed oil, and I go into some white. I spin my brush, it's already got some black in it, which is kinda good, I spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it. Just like this. And it comes to that very fine point. Now you gotta decide where you want your moss. I want it right here, so I'm gonna pull it straight down. It's gotta attach to the tree. Pull it straight down, straight down. There you go, you gotta bury the links. Put one over here. Again, you're gonna pick up some of the different colors, that's okay, you can wipe your brush back off. As you get away from the moon, you want some to be a little bit darker. Again, guys, you can use as much of this moss as you wanna do. All I'm doing is pulling straight down. Notice I haven't reloaded yet. Using what's on here, I picked up some of the brown there, that's okay. Pulling it down, pulling it down. Add a little bit more here. Just vary the lengths, you don't want them all the same. Make sure they wrap on top of the branch because that's how it joins. If you've ever seen it, it kind of joins at the top. A lot of times it's got squiggles in it, and if you want to take the time, you can do that. Uh, but for the purpose of this, I just want to just want to. Make a couple of quick ones here. I'll put one over here. That's the other one. Literally grew pretty big right there. It's okay. Hopefully that's straight. Kind of straight. A little one there. Hopefully they're straight. Well, I think they are. All right. Just a little color back in this one. Over over here. Again, folks, as much as you little as you want, don't overdo. I think it looks okay. So now, just to kind of finish it off here, I'm going to go back into that color. I notice on my trees, on my palm trees in the distance here, they're pretty wimpy. So I'm going to just take that and just go right back up and make it a little bit thicker. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to pull up some grass here in the front. For that, I need a pretty... Good amount of linseed oil, my black. I'm gonna pull up some sun right here. I still got a water line to do as well. Well, let's do the final touches and wrap this up. So I've got it very thin. Twist my brush, I come down here. I pull up with the grass, all directions. Here we go, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Again, there's really no wrong way to do this. I'm gonna tie this trunk in by pulling some grass over it. Be sure and use linseed oil. If you're having trouble getting it to come off, Make it thinner, 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 thinner is what you need to do. So I'm just spinning, I'm not holding it up because it will dump on my carpet. My wife would not like that, so I am just spinning. I'm probably missing this more than I'm touching this. Pulling up the grass here. Very quickly, very quickly. You'll probably miss more than you touch, and that's fine. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll be glad to uh, help you any way that I can. If you want to like and subscribe, or I hope to keep having more videos come out. Uh, again, just just you know, let me know what you want to see.
glad to help you if you can. Uh, love the teaching part, love giving advice. I'm certainly not the best. There are some phenomenal painters out there. Kevin Hill's one, uh, that's just phenomenal. I just cannot say enough good about Kevin. Justin, uh, so many, so many great painters out there. John Conley, so many good ones. Uh, so many good ones out there. And uh, Steve, uh, Vinny, uh, I, you name it. I, mean, I could just go on and on and on and on. There's so many good painters out there. So many good painters out there. I could just spend all day talking about and their talents. Darla, Donnelly, and so many good ones. JD, so many good ones. Anyway, okay, there we go. Uh, kind of wrap it up here. It's kind of quick, but let's wrap it up. Let me fix one little, couple little things here I see. Uh, we got a little water lining issue here because I didn't put it in. So I'm just going to take and slide, come in here, base some island here. Put that in. There's my water line here. Drag it out. Let me go ahead and add a little dirt to that too. Let me take some of this brown. Throw it in here. Make a little land piece, which I didn't do. There we go. Don't want to make it too straight. That's okay. What you can also do too is uh, take some black. Uh, black is always a good thing to add. So I guess let me spend, you know, I, I talked about being done. Let me just add, show you a couple of cool tricks that you can do. You can add black to the tree. Uh, let me show you that. Dry black, no, uh, no, no thinner. And you could just kind of come in like this and add uh, just a whole nother dimension to it just by adding some darks and lights. Uh, just it just really adds character to it just by adding different shadows and stuff like that because you're going to have a lot of that in these trees especially at night you know you don't have to see just a brown tree most trees are kind of gray anyway really so i'm gonna make this a little bigger here there we go there we go there we go you can even come up with some of this i'm gonna add in here All right, well, I think we'll call this a finish for the most part. We could have a water line over here underneath that. Horizontally straight, your water lines, pretty important. All right, guys, we think we'll consider this one done. And all we gotta do next is sign it. I have found the best item on the market to sign it with is a paint removal tool. I usually sign right here. And I appreciate you watching another episode of Painting Without Tea. Thank you guys. God bless. And uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.